He can snap two baseball bats in half over his knees and break a stack of concrete bricks with one blow. He's Ron H2O Waterman. Ron spent two years as a pro wrestler with World Wrestling Entertainment, but soon he found out that success in the ring comes at a price. Well, please welcome to the 700 Club, former MMA fighter and current team impact member, Ron H2O Waterman. Ron, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me, Gordon. I read your story. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed that you were sort of the, the chubby kid in, in grammar school, and it was a uh, special coach that convinced you that, yeah, you, you could do something. Tell yeah, us I, you know, I had uh, quite a few struggles early off in life. I was a short little chubby kid, but the main thing was I was a slow learner, you know, and I realized mm -hmm. that at an early age and, and had overcome a lot of different things. And it wasn't until sports and athletics and a coach got me involved in wrestling at, in fourth grade, and I started to get a little bit of success. That's really early. Yeah. That's fourth grade is very early for wrestling. Yeah, and that's when it just started as an intramural sport, and uh -huh. I started to get a little bit of confidence and those bullies in the school were starting to pat me on the back after I started to get a little bit of success, and I just took off from there. And by the time I was a, a senior in high school, I had earned a scholarship to go on to college. You were and, a state champ, weren't you? Yeah. And, uh, That's a big deal. <laughs> took that big leap into college, and you know, it was a step then that I never thought that I would you know, be a college student. How do, you, how do you go from that to getting in a cage? I mean, that is one of the is probably the toughest sport in the world um, uh, what, what was that progression how did you get there I was a, a high school coach graduated from college went back and coached I was actually an art teacher if you can believe that uh, coach football <laughs> and wrestling but some of my cage uh, fighters and art teacher that's right what, what's your specialty in art uh, ceramics really I'm a potter yeah <laughs> now I'm the clay <laughs> but uh, the uh, <laughs> The I, 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 you, I would never have expected that you, you know, would sit around and, and you do the, the wheel and the whole bit and, and right. turn bowls, yep. vases, yep. mugs, mugs, plates, everything. I'll make you one, yeah. You'll make me one. That's right. I'll hold you to that. <laughs> <laughs> Will you sign it on the bottle? Absolutely. I'll love them. All right. My wrestlers actually talked me into doing a competition because uh, mixed martial arts were getting pretty popular at the time and some of these wrestlers that were... Olympic wrestlers were getting real successful, so they talked me into entering a contest. I entered my first show in Denver where I live and walked through the tournament fairly easy and won three matches that night and was invited to the next Ultimate Fighting Championship. And it just kind of springboarded from there and took off and became one of the top heavyweights in the world. I tell you, looking at you and looking in your eyes, you're one of the kindest, gentlest men I've ever met. Well, thank you. And I can't imagine you doing that. <laughs> You know, did you have to like gear yourself up to for that kind of, of a sport? Yeah, and you know, I've always kind of been like this in sports. I'm a real laid back, easygoing person, but you know, when there's a competition involved, you know, you I get can, your game face. I can flip that switch and yeah, and get real competitive, but get fired up. Get fired up. <laughs> <laughs> um, how how did you go from you know? All, this kind of ultimate heavyweight champion to to now you're preaching the gospel and and you're taking the gospel to kids and and you're and you're using your strength as as sort of the entryway the door that gets you in how, how how did that whole transition happen it's kind of funny how you know god takes you on these different paths in your life you know and sometimes you don't understand why he's taking you in the direction he is until later when you look back at your life, but you know, he opened these huge doors for me in the Ultimate Fighting Championships and in World Wrestling Federation and, and got my name out there in front of a bunch of kids and people. Uh, and then all of a sudden that door was closed uh, when the World Wrestling Federation, when I was in there and, and I really didn't understand why he was taking this opportunity away from me at the time. I gotta stop you before, World Wrestling is scripted. Predetermined. Predetermined. It's predetermined. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Ultimate fighting. No script. No script. Yeah. No script. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know the outcome before you walk in. I do, but. You do. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Just spoken like a true champion. <laughs> Did you have to take the dive in WWE? Many times. Really? Many times, yeah. And he closed that door, and I really didn't understand why he was doing that in my life. Um, but one of the guys that I wrestled with, his name was Rico, and 
I knew he had been a member of a group called the Power Team in the past, and something that always intrigued me and interests me, so I spoke to him. And when that door was closed, I said, hey, can you give me a contact? I'd really like to talk to these guys. And he said, you need to, to call Team Impact Ministries. And I made a, I was actually a little bit nervous to call him, so I sent him an email. And 30 minutes later, I was on the phone with them. They had called me and flew me out to Dallas, Texas, where the headquarters are. Uh, went on a five-day crusade with them, and I've been with them ever since. You guys really do this? Yep. This isn't scripted? <laughs> it's, it's not, not like... scripted, no. And you, and you blow up things like hot water bottles and... Hot water bottles and tear right. phone books. You, you've hand. got some feats that you're going to do for us. What are they? I brought a couple with me today. I've got uh -huh. a couple phone books that I'm going to try to take down the middle, like a single sheet of paper. In front of you? In front of me. Okay. And I also have a frying pan that I'm going to attempt to do with one hand today. Roll it up until it looks like a big steel burrito. You're going to roll up a frying pan like a burrito? I'm going to attempt to okay. roll up a frying pan. All right. <laughs> You're going to walk off. Ron's going to perform with a couple of the feats of strength for us. And uh, go ahead and get over to the... Where, where are we going to do this, Pete? Oh, we're going to do it right here. All right, Ron. All right. While he gets ready for that, you can hear more of Ron's story in his book. It's called Tapped Out by Jesus, and it's available in stores nationwide. Uh, Ron, show us the frying pan. Oh, you can do, you can do, the, you can do the books first. All right. I've got a couple of phone books here, and I'm going to try to take these right down the center like a single sheet of paper. But sometimes when I do these feats of strength, um, people think that some of this stuff is set up. It's not predetermined. I haven't done anything to these books, and I'm going to have you just verify that. If you just look through that for me real quick, make sure that I haven't cut those pages. You don't pre-cut them or anything. I don't pre-cut them, yeah. And All I'll right. have you do this for me. Why don't you put your hand on the left and right, just like this They're up at the top. They're not hollow And just, just pull it apart for me, and you can show them that it's really not that hard to tear a thousand pages all at one time. <laughs> you can try. You don't have to make me look good. Go ahead. <laughs> it's real. It's real. All right. We'll see if we can take two of these and tear them right down the center like a single sheet of paper. About a thousand pages in each one of these. It's a little bit small. Um, usually I tape them both together, but we'll just do two at a time here. And it's okay if you guys applaud a little bit here. It helps me out. It gives me motivation. We're with you. Whoa. There's one. All right, now we have a quarter inch frying pan. I'm going to see if I can just put this on my hip and with one hand we'll see if I can take it and roll it up till it looks like a big steel burrito. I'll have you just touch that. You can hold it real quick. Okay. Real frying pan? It's a real frying pan. <laughs> All right, let's give this a shot here. You guys can clap for me. <laughs> Ron's going to take my lunch money in a minute, but uh, <laughs> he's got a book out, Tapped Out by Jesus, From the Cage to the Cross. It's available in stores nationwide. And for more feats of strength with Ron, head to CBN.com. Just go to our website and click the link in the green room, and we'll show you more. Ron? Thank Pleasure. you. See? This is not hurting me. All right. <laughs>